Mr. Speaker, this issue has various facets, but the first which is of note is the aspect that it uh, increases the tax burden on Kenyans by a good 3%. And while most people are already familiar with the 3%, what they are not familiar with is the penalty that is also pre prescribed, that if you do not remit that 3% within 30 days, there's an additional penalty of another 3%. So that in any one month you are in danger of having to pay 6% which can actually be recovered by court action. Secondly, and this bears repetition, um, it must be borne in mind that as national government is endeavoring to do all this, Schedule 4, Clause 18, and Schedule Part 1 and Part 2 makes it very clear that no matter how well intentioned the government may be, housing still remains a county function, gov uh, uh, you know, uh, function. And the only thing given to national government is the policy. This bill is not prescribing policy. It's prescribing the way of doing it. That will remain unconstitutional no matter how you coach it. Thirdly, Mr. Speaker, in terms of counties, this bill is very strange. It comes under the hand of the Honorable Kimani Chungwa and it purports in the purposes that it has nothing to do with counties. And yet, first of all, in the very face of the bill, Mr. Speaker, if you look at the bill Clause 10 2C, Clause 12 3B1, both of them actually expressly mention the county. Besides, in their rendering of explanation, we have been told that actually they are getting land that is right now held by the counties. You cannot get land from the counties and say the bill does not concern counties by definition and by law. It means by whatever formulation, the bill must also involve the Senate and it must also involve discussion with the county governments. Mr. Speaker, the question of land is not clear. This bill proceeds as if this units will be built in the air. There is no attempt to talk about land acquisition at all. In fact, more importantly, under the Constitution, whether it's land held on behalf of the county or on behalf of the national government, it is only the National Land Commission that is authorized to allocate that land. The bill does not even recognize the National Land Commission, and I've seen the submission by the Commission itself. It was persuading the committee to have provisions on the process of land acquisition. Otherwise, you'll end up putting public money in land that is not even owned by the public. Mr. Speaker, this bill, in a very serious manner, makes several aspects that are very unclear. First, in terms of ownership. It does not make it clear whether we are talking of affordable ownership of houses or affordable rental of houses. It is totally confused. And if you look at uh, uh, Section 10 and 37 as read together, it's only talking about then paying a percentage of whatever, 10% actually, of whatever is deemed to be uh, the worth of, uh, you know, the, the unit. It doesn't say whether it's 10% represent the, the purchase price or the rental price. This bill again, Mr. Speaker, in trying to talk of administration, it becomes very confusing. In section 11, the money is supposed to be divided three ways. Part of it is divided to the National Housing Corporation, another part to the slum upgrading program, and the third part to the state department responsible for housing in section 11. It then seeks to assume later in the bill that it is only the state department and the board that is created that is administering the fund. The truth is, once you allocate land to the National Housing Corporation, to the slum upgrading fund, you have no means under the bill of then superintending it. It means that only one third of the money allocated under this bill will be superintended by the board that is created. Mr. Speaker, in all fairness, the bill then does something very, very dangerous in Section 2A. And Mr. Speaker, we all know that the collector of taxes is the Kenya Revenue Authority. But this Section 2A 
then authorizes any other person appointed by the cabinet secretary for the time being responsible for national treasury for the purposes of collection of funds under this act. We are enabling an entity who is not even said to be a government entity to collect government taxes. We must be the only country that can <laughs> do such a thing. And besides, you know that later on, 2% of the monies allocated are then allowed to be retained by this actor. Who is this person that we are giving the possibility of collecting monies that belong to Kenyans under this fund? Mr. Speaker, I wish to submit that however well-intentioned, this bill still requires a lot of proper analysis and engagement, not at the level of drafting, but at the idea level. It is still premature, it has not been well cooked, it is being rushed, it will end up being in problems. I so submit, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. I'll give uh, Kimani, then uh, we can call the mover to reply.